today, let's talk about my favorite Roman holiday, Lupercalia. Lupercalia was a festival that may have been celebrated for about 1200 years. Let's just let that sink in for a minute. The roots of this festival were ancient, even to the Romans living during the Republic. The festival began on February 15th in the Lupercal Cave on the Palatine Hill. In Latin, Lupercal, Lupa, or Lupine simply means wolf. The Lupercal Cave is a site where, according to myth, the twins Romulus and Remus, the eventual founders of the city of Rome, were abandoned, later to be found and suckled by a she-wolf. Even after a millennia, the festival always began in the same cave. The ritual itself began as a fairly private affair, with two colleges of priests alone in the cave. Each priestly college was hereditary, kept within a family. One college of priests belonged to the Quintilii, who were, according to tradition, descended from the followers of Romulus. The other college belonged to the Fabii, who were descended from the traditional followers of Remus. In a strange quirk of history, the Quintilii, who were the descendants of Rome's first king and the man who eventually gave Rome his name, were actually a fairly obscure noble family. On the other hand, the Fabii, who were descended from the followers of Romulus's slain twin brother, were one of the most famous families in all of Rome. After the two priestly families gathered in the Lupercal Cave, they would begin with a private feast and lots of wine. After this meal, these tipsy priests would sacrifice several goats and a dog and offer them to the gods. The sacrifice of a dog is noteworthy here. The Romans never sacrificed dogs. If you consider that Lupercalia simply means wolf festival, it doesn't take a stretch to see that the dog was a symbolic stand-in for a wolf. After the sacrifice, two young men were brought forward, standing in for Romulus and Remus, and a bloody knife was rubbed on their foreheads. Then one of the priests would immediately wash off the blood with goat's milk. The symbolism here seems obvious. The violent acts of the founders of the city are forgiven and washed away by milk from a simple agrarian lifestyle, which the Romans always idealized. If that was all that Lupercalia was, it would be a fairly conservative, normal Roman festival. Feasts and animal sacrifice were fairly common. However, after the priests left the cave, this festival took on a life of its own. The priests of the Quintilii and the Fabii would take the dead goats and fashion whips with their hides. Yes, whips. Then, the priests took off all of their clothes. Some accounts say that they constructed small loincloths out of the goat hide to cover themselves. But others say that they remained totally naked. Plutarch says that they wore loincloths, so let's go with that. The priests from these two families would then exit the cave, still drunk, wearing loincloths, and proceed to run up and down the crowded city streets like maniacs. When the priests encountered people on the street, they would hit them with their newly constructed goat whip. This may sound horrific, but my suspicion is that the whips were never designed to really hurt anybody. They probably made a slapping sound, rather than a snapping sound. There's never a mention of any blood, or anybody in any pain whatsoever. From all accounts, people actually wanted to get hit. Getting whipped by one of the Luprico priests was supposed to bring good luck, and make men and women extra fertile, and ease the pain of childbirth. There are accounts of women brazenly running up to the nearly naked priests and intentionally allowing themselves to be hit. Our sources kind of drop hints that they thought this was a bit unsporting. It seems that the onlookers were supposed to at least pretend that the whips hurt, and look like they were trying to get away. By all accounts, the city was filled with laughter the entire evening. It was one of Rome's favorite holidays. And why wouldn't it be? It's my favorite Roman holiday too. These men were famous, drunk, naked, and hitting strange women with pieces of dead goat. What's not to like? 